to the field goal that Tata kicked with 48 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Florida State has come out throwing in this series. On first down, a 20-yard completion from Woodham to Unglaub. On second down, Chambers sacking Un or Woodham for a four-yard loss. Now Platt is to the top of the screen, Unglaub to the bottom on second and 14. From the Florida State 41, Holmes Johnson on the sprint draw, breaks the tackle, gets across midfield into Navy territory. Chuck Zingler made the stop for Navy, finally. But it's a pickup of 11 yards for Holmes Johnson, and it will make it third and four. Woodham getting the call from reserve tight end Bill Keck. So now it will be Keck in the ball game at tight end. Platt and Unglaub are the wideouts. Platt to the bottom of the screen this time. Woodham wants Platt and just misses it. Zingler was the man who was covering. He went to the inside. Woodham got the ball past Zingler, but Platt couldn't hold it with what might have been a touchdown. They really like to uh, bring their receivers from outside in, Jimmy. They really like to attack the middle in Florida State in their offense. They also like to have wide receivers on both sides, spread that defense out, and let Wally Woodham or Jimmy Jordan, whoever's in quarterback, pick people apart. Ron Stark will be in to punt it for the Seminoles, and Sandy Jones, number 89, is deep to receive for Navy. This time, the Navy rush is not fierce. Jones is going to let it fall inside the 10, and it rolls into the end zone. So it is a 47-yard punt for Stark, and it will be first down for the midshipmen at their 20-yard line. Midshipman out of the huddle on first down. Lashinsky with Klein and Dennis still in the ball game as setbacks. The man in motion is Papa John, replacing McConkey at wide receiver. Dennis is met by Reggie Herring, number 39, a very sure tackler, the sophomore linebacker from Titusville. You see Herring with the clinched fist there. Statistics in the first quarter. And the difference in time of possession is in favor of Florida State. Navy wanted to keep the ball and control it. But overall, it is a Navy advantage with total yardage advantage, and they're even in turnovers. Everything's, uh, as you said, Jimmy, the turnover factor, what really won the first quarter for Navy was uh, they finally capitalized on the field position problem that they hadn't enjoyed. Sandy Jones split to the bottom of your screen. Second down, 12 yards to go. This time, the running back is flying with the football, and he is met and cartwheeled by Simmons, number 50. Willie Jones, 88, was also there. Ron Simmons is making his presence felt early. Recruited out of Warner Robins, Georgia, an all-everything high school player who was wanted by literally hundreds of schools. And from an institutional standpoint, in terms of building the program here, he is probably the most important recruit so far for Bobby Bowden. Bowden came here on January 28, 1976. On third down, long yardage, Lisinski throws the screen. Dennis with the football, and he is blocked. Reggie Herring, number 39, once again making the stop for FSU. And now the Seminoles have a chance to pick up good field position, as Navy must once again punt from well inside its 20. Florida State showing a little bit of discipline on defense too, Jimmy, that because it was a well-executed screenplay, but they were there. Great tackle by Reggie Herring. The putter is O'Hanion, number 90. Keith Jones is the receiver. Jones is going to run it back. Gets past the first man, but now is dumped at the 50-yard line. Frank McAllister, number 71, the offensive guard, again made the stop after the 36-yard punt by O'Hanion. Clouds have moved over the stadium, and we're told that the first few tiny droplets of rain have started to fall here in Doak Campbell Stadium. And you would have to believe that rain would favor the more ball-control-oriented Navy team. Our score is 3-0 Navy. We've got 12-14 left in the half. Next to the highway that leads into Tallahassee from the airport. 
Go Knowles. And right now, the Knowles are getting wet. The rain has started to fall. Holmes Johnson with the football on first down. And he gets just across midfield. Well, actually, they're going to mark it just a little bit back of midfield. Call it no gain. Make it second down 10. Bart Nixon, number 88, junior defensive end from Bay City, Michigan, made the stop. Scores of other games. Iowa State jumping on top of Colorado in the first quarter. Bill Mallory, the Colorado coach, supposedly in trouble there. Steve Davis will tell us more about it. Second quarter, Texas A&M and Arkansas all tied up at 7-7 in a game with bowl implications. Woodham, complete to Platt. Platt trying to get yardage across the middle. Finally dumped after a gain of about six. Charlie Thornton, 84, the defensive end, made the stop for Navy. That will bring up third down four. Massachusetts leading New Hampshire 7-0 early. Jimmy, as we look at scores, one of the amazing things about Wally Woodham, he drops back on that play particularly. He was back 12 yards throwing the football. Really causes the linebackers to drop. Again, no, this time they fake the reverse. Johnson keeps it, and he may have a first down near or at the 40. Greg Milo, 49, the rover back. Stayed home and made the tackle. Along with number 59, Reggie Trask. It's really interesting, Jimmy, that Florida State would try to run that type of play against Navy. They are very disciplined. They're very smart. They stay at home. And uh, they're trying to take advantage of it. But uh, you don't do that against intelligent football teams. Fourth down, about a half yard to go for the first down. The Seminoles are going to try for it. Packed in tight. Two tight ends, Childers and Williams. Give is to Johnson. He was leaping. He didn't have to. First down for Florida State at the Navy 37-yard line. Holmes Johnson getting a lot of work already. Early in the season, he rushed for 135 yards in the opening game against Syracuse. Then after that, his efficiency began to decline. So far, Johnson has carried 10 times for 33 yards in this ball game. Johnson discovered that he didn't like to talk to reporters, didn't like being a star for a while. And right now, there is a Florida State player down on the field. So as they administer to him with 10 minutes, 16 seconds remaining in the half, we will leave you, but we'll be back in a minute. 70, Gary Futch, or Greg Futch, I should say, an offensive tackle for Florida State, has just been brought off the field with an apparent arm injury. It didn't look too serious. He's been replaced by his brother, Gary Futch. And now, on first down, Wally Woodham is looking deep. Got a receiver all alone. It's Unglau who makes the catch before he is knocked out of bounds inside the Navy 20. Call at the 15-yard line. Another reception for Kurt Unglau, the junior from Tallahassee Leon High School, the same high school that brought you Woodham and Jordan. Wally Woodham will make the uh, fake drop way back, sprint a little bit to his right, then throw back. Unglob really by himself waiting on the football, ran out of bounds. Great play by Unglob and timing pass by Wally Woodham. He can throw that ball. 23-yard gain on the play, tackled by Reitzel, the free safety, who reacted late. That is Mark Lyles with the ball, and he is met right at the line of scrimmage. Florida State not getting much against the middle of the Navy defense. That was what we tried to talk about a little bit in the pregame show, that how important it would be in the offensive and defensive lines to be able to control it. We've got another injured player on the uh, field now. Now that is 70, Greg Futch. Back he has gone back into the football game, but so obviously he was not hurt too badly, and just as you say, a Navy player is down. That is 73, Steve Chambers. Defensive tackle who has been in on top of Woodham a couple times already in the ball game. Let me finish my point. It's, it's very important that, uh, especially the offense, Florida has been at Florida State has been able so far to to get some, have some success. Navy is very physical, an exceptionally strong football team, and uh, the war will be decided this afternoon by who wins the battle in that line of scrimmage. Sound like a football coach, Davis? Not me. No, I, I can't do that. I've never been there. I was on a four-year scholarship, not a three-year contract. It's good you couldn't get fired. <laughs> Five of nine, 67 yards for Woodham so far. Trying for six points. Platt had it in his hands, but dropped it. He was covered under and over, though. Chuck Zingler was the man who was inside of Platt and made it difficult for him to make the catch. Platt's a 9-8 sprinter, so he's got the speed. 
Wally Woodham drops back. It's across the middle, trying to really... Wally might have pressed that ball a little bit, tried to force it in there just a little bit because there were linebackers were dropping, and they also were getting uh, support from the safeties. Now it is third down, nine yards to go. The ball is at the 14. They need to get to the five. Florida State so far in the ball game, three of seven on third down conversions. Pump fake. Shoulders the tight end. Interception. Touchback. It will be Navy football at the 20. Very big play by number 26, Fred Reitzel, the sophomore safety man from Verona, New Jersey, who has been described as the best athlete in that Navy secondary. Woodham was going for Philip Williams. Reitzel just really takes the ball away from him. It was Both of them were making a, a legitimate effort for the ball, but Fred just came up and said, I want the football. Oh, is it Sanders? Childers. Okay, there it is. Let's see who's the throw. There's the ball in the air, and they're both after it, and he really pulls it away from him. Are you sure, Jimmy? It was 84, Sam Childers, the tight end, a freshman from here in Tallahassee, was the intended receiver. Both men, as Steve Davis said, going for the football and a big play by Reitzel on first down. Tolbert back in the ball game for Navy at fullback. Carries for four yards. So it will be second down six for the midshipman. Well, now they call it a gain of only three. Second and seven from the 23. Childers made three catches last week, replacing Brady King as tight end for Florida State. Hasn't had a catch today. Ron Simmons with another big play from his nose guard position, dumping Chris Klein. We watch it. Ron Simmons runs a 4-5-40, can bench press 4-75. He muscles the center and just goes over him. He just shows the power. And he's scary. You know, you get around him, and his, he is so big, physically. He's, his upper body, chest, and really can handle those centers. And uh, I promise you, Kramer's got the, a mouthful to handle today. Third down, seven for Nate. Wyszynski wants to throw. Open man down the middle was 89, Sandy Jones, but 49, David Hanks, the strong side linebacker, reacted very quickly for Florida State, as did that man, the safety man, Keith Jones. They closed the hole up in a hurry. The incompletion brings up a fourth down seven, another putting situation for Ohanian and Navy. Keith Jones goes back to receive the punt for Florida State. He's standing at about his 34. It is still 3-0 Navy. Florida State trying to get the right number of men on the field. And O'Hanion hits a bomb. Jones chasing. Ball bounces straight up and now takes a little bit of a Navy roll and will be downed at the 21-yard line. That is a 56-yard putt for O'Hanion of Navy. So Florida State will have the football at their 21, trailing 3-0 when we come back. One of the symbols of Florida State football, circling the field on that beautiful horse. And we've had a replacement. Jimmy Jordan now in the ball game, replacing Woodham at quarterback for Florida State. On first down, Lyles with the ball. And the big fullback has a couple from the 21 out to about the 23. We're isolated right now on the nose guard of Navy, A.B. Miller, number 78. And let's look at it. Alvin Miller, former walk-on, spinning off of Gil Wesley, the center. And that's a, that's a good job of the center. He won that battle. All you got to do is hold that nose guard up. Make him uh, kind of get detained with you just a little bit. Then let's go. Jordan wants to throw on second down. He has the stronger arm. And he has Sam Platt open for the moment. Couldn't quite get it there. Platt had a step on number 36, Chuck Zingler. The pass was thrown just a little bit short of the intended target. Platt had to come back. Zingler got back into it. Incomplete. Jimmy Jordan does throw the long ball very well. Sam Platt, the fast, speedy receiver. The ball's there, but so is Chuck Zingler. He was right on. Very good coverage. Good, good throw. Third down, eight yards to go. We look at Platt again. You see him trying to go up over Zingler to make the catch. Amazing. Both of them step for step. The ball may be a little bit behind. Unglaub to the top of your screen. Platt to the bottom. Jordan dropping well back. Down the middle, Unglaub almost makes the catch, but was unable to hold on as Charlie Myers, who is having a big game at cornerback, 
was right with Unglaub over the middle. So Jimmy Jordan's first two passes go incomplete. We look at Unglaub here's, again. Here's Unglaub operating on Myers number 66. They're step for step, both of them turning inside, anticipating the route by Myers. Very good route. Excellent pass recovery. I'll tell recovery. you that Myers is a heck of an athlete, Steve. You can see him get up into the air while running full speed to make the stop. Ron Stark back to punt it for Florida State. He's been kicking pretty well. This one he hits low. Sandy Jones chasing it. He'll watch it roll. Now he's going to pick it up inside his 20. And great coverage by the Seminoles. Scott McLean, number 60, was the man who gets credit for the tackle. But a 54-yard punt by Stark. Excellent coverage by a host of Seminole tacklers. And Navy will start the offense pin back at their 16-yard line. Jimmy, Navy's had seven possessions. This will be the seventh possession. They've, they've gone something like this. Very routine, very patient football. Three downs and punt, three downs and punt. Four downs and fumble, three downs and field goal. Three downs and punt, three downs and punt. They are very patient. They wait to make the break, get the drive together, and something happens. Florida State declines. A prospective offside penalty against Navy five yards would not have given them a first down, and they want to go ahead and take the great punt by Stark, which has locked Navy back at the 16. So the middies in jail on offense, where they've been throughout much of the afternoon, thanks to the excellent punting of Stark. Papa John is flipped to the top of your screen. Lezinski keeping on the option, trying to cut up inside. And check it. That is not Lezinski. That is now Bobby Powers, 18, the backup quarterback who's in there replacing Lezinski. We look at the score from Ann Arbor. Michigan trying to take a step closer to the Rose Bowl. Leads Purdue 10-0 in the first quarter. Boston University beating Bucknell. Powers, a 6-foot, 3-inch, 204-pound junior from Beaver, Pennsylvania, now has replaced Lezinski at quarterback. That means more option play runs for Navy. To give the number 23, Sherlock. David Hanks, number 49, reacted over to make the stop. And we're just about to see the Colgate score, I can tell, because our producer, Doug Wilson, is popping it to me in my ear. Yes, Colgate leading Delaware 3-0. Wilson and Assetti both. Our producer and director, Colgate grads. Arkansas having taken a 10-7 lead over Texas A&M in the second quarter. Now, third down, three yards to go for Navy. Dennis and Klein are the running backs. Too much time. Delay of game call against the midshipman is gonna cost them five yards, make it third and eight back inside the 20, and that is a mistake that looks small in tomorrow's papers, but it could be critical right now for George Welsh and the midshipmen. A lot of reasons why it probably happened. Bobby Powers, the new quarterback, number 18 in the football game. I'm very interested to try to figure out exactly what they're trying to do from uh, Coach Welch's perspective. There's Bobby Powers' statistics. Lashinchi really did not do anything wrong. They just haven't uh, probably moved the ball as well as they wanted to against Florida State. But now Bobby Powers is in there trying to change the tempo. He's a better runner. There's George Welsh show you how efficient and well coached these two teams are that is the first penalty that has been assessed in this game we have 542 left in the first half 32, go. powers gives to blaine dennis florida state defense gives up only about four yards on the play ohanian will come on again to punt it for navy mark masek number 67 big sophomore defensive tackle made the stop for florida state Keith Jones back to receive for Florida State. Ohanian ready to punt. Tenth punt of the ball game already. As it has been a kicker's battle so far. Both defenses reacting well to what the offenses are showing. This time Ohanian hits it a little bit off the side of the foot. Jones makes the fair catch at his 40-yard line. So it is a 37-yard punt. And Florida State will have another offensive thrust with pretty good field position just inside their own 40. 5.02 left in the half. They still trail it. We're back at Doak Campbell Stadium in Tallahassee. And she is a little bit puzzled by the exposure, but it's first down 10 for Florida State. Platt is to the near side. Unglaub to the top of the screen. Completion from Jordan to Unglaub. 
inside Navy territory to the 45. 15-yard pickup on the play. Here's Unglaub. This is the quick game. The quarterback, Jordan, just dropped three steps back on timing. It's a timing pass. Cuts right inside of Charlie Myers, 66, before the linebackers or the cornerback can get to the play. Good execution. Timing pass. Another first down for Florida State. This time, Williams to the top of the screen, flat to the bottom. Intended receiver is number 32, Greg Ramsey, and Ramsey is all the way down to the Navy 11-yard line before Charlie Thornton, the defensive end, knocked him down. First time that Florida State has swung a back out of the backfield, deep downfield, and it paid off. As Jimmy Jordan was looking at him all the way, caught him for the 34-yard pickup. Ramsey from the halfback position in the split-back formation, as Jordan just lays the beautiful touch that we've seen, just lays it right in the money there. It's tough. A linebacker, usually in a man coverage, has that back out of the backfield. They were zoned that time. Someone had to pick him up. Jimmy Jordan quickly hops from 0 for 2 to 2 to 4, or 2 for 4. This time the pitch is to Holmes Johnson. He's got a touchdown if he can get outside. He does. It is not Johnson. It is Ramsey, the man who made the catch on the previous play. The junior tailback from Fort Lauderdale puts Florida State on top. Shows you their explosiveness. Davy Kaplan will try to add the seven points. He's got it. They got the football with 5.02 left in the half. There is 4.10 still showing on the clock. And the Seminoles took 52 seconds to go out on top 7-3 to three with a 60-yard drive in three plays. The completion from Jordan to Unglau. The completion from Jordan to Ramsey. And then Ramsey sweeping the right side from 11 yards out for the touchdown. and plugging away against an offense like Florida State, sooner or later, they're going to sting it. That's certainly right, Jimmy. And uh, the change of quarterback, another true picture. Wally Woodham had problems. Bring it. There's the uh, pitch sweep to Platt. I mean, sorry, I've got it all mixed up. Well, let me say again. Greg Ramsey made the touchdown. But the, what I wanted to say is that Sam Platt made the key block on the corner. I saw his number, and I said his name. Big block by Platt. Touchdown, Ramsey. Capiz kicking off. 89 is Sandy Jones for Navy at the goal line. Met as he gets across the 20 to about the 22-yard line. Run back of 23 yards for Sandy Jones. First down for the midshipman. Now trailing for the first time in the ballgame, 7-3. to three. Lashinsky back in the game at quarterback for Navy. So Powers was in for only one series. Jones to the top of the screen. Papa John to the bottom. Setbacks are Dennis and Klein. Number 83 is Carl Hendershot, the tight end who started in place of Kurt Gaynor today. And Hendershot has the catch. 12-yard pickup, tackled by Mike Kincaid. First down for the Naval Academy. Hendershot in his tight end position. He's only caught two passes coming in today, and he's all alone. A little bit of delay pattern. He leaves, holds a little bit of count there at the line of scrimmage, then goes out in the flat, makes the reception. Mike Chapman, number 35, now in the game at a wide receiver position. He's to the top of the screen. Papa John is to the bottom. Lashinsky is going to go to Chapman. And he's got him inside Florida State territory. The saving tackle was by number 40, Gary Henry, a freshman safety man. And had he not reacted over to make the stop, Chapman would have had a touchdown. Very well thrown pass by Lashinsky to Chapman. Chapman, the number 35, really the pressure. Gary Henry was there, but boy, he got behind everybody on the corner. Navy uh, dropping their patient, conservative offense. 30-yard pickup, Lashinsky to Chapman. First down for the midshipman at the Florida State 34. Same play. 
That time it was Sandy Jones. There was contact at the one yard line. No flag went down. Again, Gary Henry was the man who reacted over on the coverage. That time he saw it coming a little more quickly than he did the last time. Well, Coach George Welsh says, I'm going to try it again and see if that Florida State safety man still isn't looking for it. One, one of the good things, Bob Legetti, the quarterback, is looking away, looking away from the coverage and then coming back, pressures the defense. Papa John to the near side, Chapman to the far side. The give is to Dwayne Dennis and the quickest of the Navy running backs who's been in there for each of the last four series gets inside the Florida State 30 to the 29 before Jeremy Mendlin, number 77, made the stop for the Seminoles. Pick up a five, it will be third down five. Jeremy Mendlin grew up on 64th Street down in Miami. I used to kick him out of the touch football games we had in that neighborhood. He now weighs 247 pounds and it was a mistake. He would be using you for a football, kicking you of the goal line. Papa John is split to the bottom of your screen. He is the man Lisinski's looking for, but now Lisinski gets away from Mendlin and dumps it across the middle, incomplete intended for Sandy Jones. Jeremy Mendlin had the chance to dump Lashinsky well back outside the 40-yard line and just missed it. Now it's fourth down five. Bob Tata is on to attempt a 46-yard field goal. Lashinsky is down to hold. The kick is good. So Tata adds his second field goal of the day after the long completion from Lachinsky to Chapman, which set it up. And Navy gets back within a point at seven to six. We still have two minutes, 28 seconds remaining before the half. And both teams have opened up considerably and on offense. They really have. They've uh, gotten a little frustrated with the battle that's going on in the offensive and the defensive line and have gone to the air and have found some interesting things in the secondary and both teams are trying to pick it uh, each other and they're having some success. It will be number 27, Michael Whiting, who will go deep for Florida State. There is Bob Tata, who just knocked through the 46-yard field goal. Now, number 91, Roland Ellis, has come on and he will kick it off for Navy. Ellis is a senior from Baldwinsville, New York. It would be that Tata used every ounce of energy in that leg to get the 46-yarder through there. Whiting with a low kick. Is dropped as he gets to about the 25-yard line. Number 41 is Randy Lay, a reserve linebacker downfield to make the tackle. 23-yard run back for Whiting. FSU ball just inside their own 25. And it will still be Jimmy Jordan at the controls. Coach Bobby Bowden says that once he knows what a defense is doing, he feels he can call the plays with some certainty, that Jimmy Jordan is the man he likes to have in there. He calls him the fastball pitcher. Woodham is a little bit better responding to a defense. Greg Ramsey with another big play coming out of the backfield all the way up to the 39-yard line. 15-yard pickup for Ramsey. Another first down for the Seminoles. Ted Dumbald, number 69, a sophomore linebacker from Troy, Ohio, made the stop as you look at Bobby Bowden along the sidelines. A man who has the great luxury of having two excellent quarterbacks, Wally Woodham and Jimmy Jordan, both with another year of eligibility here at Florida State. This time, Ramsey is wrapped up. And Charlie Thornton, number 84, who's made a lot of big plays for Navy, was there to tackle him. No game, second and 10. Jimmy, you were talking about Bobby Bowden having uh, the exclusive privilege of having uh, two fine quarterbacks that are just juniors. One interesting thing that we've got to say, they only have five seniors on Florida State's roster right now. He's going to have a lot of people coming back. Only three of them starters, so 19 of their 22 starters will be back. Jordan is looking over the middle to Unglau, overthrows it. Now it will be third down 10. Charlie Myers had the tight coverage on Kurt Unglau. Coming up next on NCAA College Football Live, 
at 5 o'clock or 4 o'clock Eastern Time. Southern Cal versus UCLA. That, of course, immediately following this telecast, the showdown for the Pac-10 title. The winner of that ball game will go to the Rose Bowl. UCLA, surprisingly, upset by Oregon State a week ago. Southern Cal, fifth ranked in the nation. Third down, 10. Jordan throwing for Sam Platt. Big catch. Platt goes out of bounds at the maybe 32-yard line, but not before making a superb over-the-shoulder catch. Thirty-yard pickup on the play. Remember that in college football, you need to get only one foot down inbounds in order for the pass to be complete. There's Jimmy Jordan going to Sam Platt, the speeder on the out. It's kind of a deep post pattern. Whoa-oh. We'll see that again, and we'll see what uh, we might have a uh, foot out of bounds. Let's see if he's got right anything in. I think he got the right foot down. Uh, nope. Nope. <laughs> he didn't. But it was a close call, and it goes down as a Florida State completion, and now Jordan throws it over the head of Ernie Sims, the reserve sophomore fullback, to make it second down 10. Well, sometimes that happens. <laughs> Maybe the official was just as dazzled by Platt's catch as we were. <laughs> I think the motion of his hand, uh, probably the referee, or I'm not going to speculate, but I was, got tied up looking at his hand rather than his feet. His hands were up, the ball wasn't there, and his feet were out of bounds when he had the ball. It was a great catch, just out of bounds. <laughs> there are the statistics on Jimmy Jordan. He's looking for Platt again. Good coverage down there by Zingler, number 36. He was the cornerback who had Platt from the outside. And the safety man, Reitzel, 26, also reacted over to help out. There's Bobby Bowden along the sidelines. Fred Reitzel, the free safety for Navy, has been getting close to a lot of big plays back there in the Navy secondary. Jordan is going to want to try to influence him off the ball if he wants to throw deep down the middle. Sack. Number 84, Charlie Thornton, was the first man to get there. And number 76, John Merrill, followed it. And Jordan never had a chance. The sack took them out of field goal range. It was a 13-yard loss. The best way to stop the pass, put the pressure on him. He drops back so far. He's got his back to the uh, defensive line. And by the time he stood up at 12 yards to start looking downfield, he had Mr. Thornton and Mr. Merrill in his face. Ball is back at the 45. Ron Stark comes on to punt for Florida State. Sandy Jones is standing at about his 11-yard line. Grenade. Stark's punt bounces into the end zone. Touchback, it will be Navy football at the 20 with precisely 20 seconds left in the half. So credit Stark with a 45-yard punt in what continues as an excellent kicking day for him. Florida State has a 7-6 lead. Two Navy field goals by Bob Tata. An 11-yard touchdown run by Greg Ramsey of the Seminoles. Those are the only scores in the ballgame. And the difference in the score, Davy Kaplan's extra point. Lashinsky keeps the ball on first down. Dragged down from behind by Masek. The clock will continue to run with 12, 11, 10. That may be the last play of the first half. And that's it. We go to halftime with Florida State leading Navy 7-6. We'll be back with halftime festivities after this word about an upcoming program.